How's it going guys, Vabov here and welcome to a first impression slash follow up using the Adobe Premiere Pro M1 software. So I've been waiting for this thing to drop for about one month now and it's finally here. This is the M1 optimized version of Adobe Premiere Pro and this video is sort of my first impressions and also a follow up to the video I made two weeks ago talking about the rendering performance on my Mac mini. I've got the 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage variant and I think this is going to be very interesting to to try out. But before we get into that, I just want to say if you're looking for any changes with Premiere Pro, there isn't much to really discuss. I mean, yes, the general performance of Premiere Pro M1 is definitely smoother. You can play back things a bit faster. You can play back and jump between your timeline a bit faster. But aside from that, if you're really dealing with high um, sort of demanding timelines, there won't be that much of a difference. I don't think the difference is equivalent to let's say Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve where performance even with high-end files is really, really good. So maybe there is a bit of time left for Adobe to iron things out. And this of course is the beta version of the software. So I'm gonna cut it some slack, but I'm really excited to test out the rendering performance of Premiere Pro M1 because that's exactly what I really care about. I'm not the kind of guy who really emphasizes on smooth editing performance. I can get by with a few choppy timelines or, you know, playing back at one fourth resolution. I can deal with that maybe because I'm used to it, but I want my render times to be quick. But before we get into render times, let me just say there are some more problems that I want to point out with this version of Premiere Pro. So all's not fine and dandy when it comes to the M1 running Premiere Pro. Two of the things that I've noticed so far, aside from the many that have been outlined by the community post over on Adobe, if you want a full detailed breakup of everything that it supports and everything that it doesn't, I'll definitely recommend you check that out. I'll leave it as a link down in the description. But two of the things that have impacted my editing workflow, number one, MPEG-4 files don't work. So basically, MP3 files aren't recognized by Premiere Pro for whatever reason. And this is a big deal because the render file that I have 5 minutes and 53 seconds worth of footage, well, it had a background track that was MP3 and it wasn't recognized by the beta version of Premiere, but it was recognized by the Intel version. So that's something you should keep in mind. But I was able to make the beta version recognize the track by converting it from MP3 to WAV or WAV as people like to call it. And it did work that way. So if you want to deal with MP3 files, you might want to convert them to WAV or just avoid using this beta version of Premiere Pro altogether. Number two, and I think this was more of a surprise to me, but again, it is outlined on the community post at Adobe's website. The estimated file sizes for these renders are huge. So when I rendered that test clip, I was expecting about 3.5 to 3.7 gigabytes, but this thing was telling me that the overall file, the final file is gonna be 127 gigabytes, for which I don't even have space on my Mac mini, but that's just a bug. So when you click export, it's basically gonna tell you that you don't have enough space. Just avoid it, just ignore it, and go ahead with the export, and it works just fine as I've tried. Okay, so those were some of the problems that I've faced with Premiere Pro Beta, aside from one being a force close and a crash, which I wanted to save for the end, but now let's get to the good stuff, which is the export speed. So if you've missed my previous video where I've done a rendering test and then the one that I've alluded to a couple of times in this video, make sure you check it out. I'll leave a card above uh, to check that out. It's basically a video where I've rendered a five minute, 53 second clip using the exact same settings on DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, as well as Premiere Pro. And in that video, Premiere Pro came in last at 5 minutes and 59 seconds taken. Well, it turns out with the beta version of Premiere Pro in this case, it takes 4 minutes and 49 seconds to render that exact same clip. And for those mathematicians out there, that is almost a 20% improvement when it comes to rendering times, which I'll honestly take for a first beta. It's not quite up there when it comes to Handbrake M1 versus Handbrake Intel, where it registered about a 40% improvement, but I think with future iterations, this thing should get better. In fact, this thing beats out DaVinci Resolve, which took 4 minutes and 55 seconds, and it's in the vicinity of Final Cut Pro, which took 4 minutes and 24 seconds. So I'm definitely happy with that. As a Premiere Pro editor, this really makes me happy. I just want to see timeline performance improve in the next couple of iterations we get with this beta. And maybe once this thing is out of beta and once this thing is fully supportive of M1, I think you're going to see massive improvements. For someone who uses Premiere Pro to edit videos on the go, edit videos every day, 
this is really important and just makes the Mac Mini the perfect machine as far as regular general editing is concerned. I'm still gonna edit more intensive files in the long run and give you guys my overall thoughts on Premiere Pro M1 maybe in a couple of weeks, so do stay tuned for that. But if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe to the channel to see more content. The M1 Mac Mini review is coming out very shortly, so subscribe. Thanks for watching, this was Vapov and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!